Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. Having lived like a really uh, rotten life is, it makes life easier now because I just think however I would have done something back then, I just do the exact opposite now. Meet a man who had a spiritual awakening that turned his life completely around. See how a young photographer creates imaginary worlds with the maps he draws. Learn how to make jewelry out of old magazines. Meet a single mom who is just one of the thousands of Big Island residents struggling to make ends meet. Find out how a group of seventh graders is helping to get essential hygiene products to the people in need and get to know a chef who has dedicated his life to feeding the homeless. All on this episode of Hiki No, coming to you from the students of Eva Makai Middle School on Oahu, home to the Tigers. That's next on Hawaii's new wave of storytellers, Hiki No. Can do! We're here at Eva Makai on the island of Oahu. Did you know that Eva Makai is one of the few green schools in our Eva district? We grow our own produce in our own courtyards to be later used in our culinary classes. We create dishes like lao lao made with their own tea leaves, bubble ganoush made with their own eggplants, and smoked salmon canopies made with their own cucumbers and tomatoes. Our first story takes us to the Isle of Kauai, where students at Chief East Kamakahele Middle School tell the story of a man who led a life headed for destruction until a spiritual awakening turns his life around. Having lived like a really uh, rotten life is it makes life easier now because I just think however I would have done something back then, I just do the exact opposite now. Kauai resident John Rail loves music, the ocean, and his relationship with his God. But his past tells a much darker story. When I was young, my parents started to get divorced. There was a friend of mine commit suicide. Um, my, when I was young, like early teens, preteen, and, and uh, those had really negative effects on, on me and I just started going down the wrong path you know I started I dropped out of high school I was doing a lot of drugs uh, I found myself in my early 40s homeless living on the streets in uh, Arizona and California I had a very bad IV drug habit when John hit rock bottom he feared where life would take him next I didn't realize when I needed to change I didn't know how it took me crying out to God to make the change happen. I never uh, went to NA. I was, I was, like I said, I was living on the streets, a homeless um, IV drug user. It didn't happen overnight, but it, it, it took several years. I just started to change. The Lord started working in my life. The Lord would send somebody into my life uh, with an act of compassion and love. And a lot of times her name was Mary. So I venerate the Blessed Mother like crazy to this day. John's spiritual journey led him to Kauai, but an early morning stroll in an unexpected encounter paved his way to his God. Listen to the Holy Spirit move me to come to Hawaii, and I had always dreamed of living in Hawaii. I work in a concierge business. I sell uh, activities at Branicke's uh, Beach Center down in Poipu Beach, and I serve St. Raphael Catholic Church. One day I had a walk up the Hapa Trail over here, and it was very early in the morning and the sun was rising over there and the Hapa Trail comes out right over here at the driveway of the church. And uh, I saw that they were having mass. It was a weekday and it was 7 a.m. And uh, a bird flew out of the bell tower as I was about to turn around and walk to Koloa. And he flew right in front of my face and flew right back up into the bell tower. And that's how I started coming to St. Raphael Church. There's always something about him. When I first met him, he was a role model to me. I'm, here I am comfortable you know, in my life, and I see this man who came here with, with nothing, and yet there's something that he has that um, is very, very positive and very attractive. With the help of his friends, his church, and his new island home, John continues to rebuild his life with happiness and hope. 
Well, I'm undoing all the mistakes in my past, you know, living the most righteous way that I can, you know. Nobody's perfect, we're all sinners. I'm living my dream. Uh, like I said, this, this had always been like a dream of mine to like live in a nice community, hang out, surf, and play music with my friends, and, and, and do things with meaning and purpose. John openly shares his story of struggle so others can learn from his mistakes and draw inspiration from his journey. Without sounding cliche, all the, all the things you always hear. Stay in school, don't do drugs. Stay in church is the number one thing. He's a role model because he has shown that you can change. You can move forward. You don't have to stay the same way you are. He's hit rock bottom and he's turned around. It only takes a couple of little bad decisions to turn into a whole bunch of big bad decisions. And before you know it, you can be away from the church and, they're, uh, and far away from God. And, and far away from your dreams and your goals and your aspirations. And that's an awful place to be. This is Gabriel Gold from Chief Kamakehele Middle School for Hikino. Now from the Hikino archives, another story of spiritual redemption, this time from the students at Maui High School in Kahului. One, two, three. <laughs> If I were to describe Unite in three words, it would be following God's design. Perfect. Let's try it again. Achieving such a vision was a big task for 18-year-old Mark Antonio, who was given the responsibility to contact local performers and organize the Unite concert held in June. Unite is kind of this organization where we aim at uniting the body of Christ we unite and come together and change the youth of this community because there's been a lot of violence, there's been a lot of suicides, a lot of drug usage, and it's become a problem on this island. So that's what Unite pushes for. It's to make that first step, to make that first encounter with these kids. Reaching out to teenagers becomes a goal because then that's where you see the most violence. And that's where you see the most depressing stories. However, Mark had quite a journey before taking on this first step. I went through my own depression. I went through these suicidal thoughts. I experienced what it's like to have, to want to kill yourself, to want to be on the edge where you're like, there's no point of me here. There's no one that loves me here. I should just go. There's no point in me being here anymore. And that's a very dark time. And a lot of teenagers experience that. For nights I was praying, like, let me find that purpose, that let me be able to rest in just your love and just focus on that. Please give me hope again. Give me this hope that I've been wanting. Fortunately for Mark, his prayer was answered in an unexpected way. Then I get a call from the Maui County Baptist Association that hey, we're thinking about putting on a concert. Let's put it towards the youth. Let's appeal to the youth. What do you think? Are you willing to oversee the whole project? And then God's like, yeah, this is where I'm going to make you feel loved again. So I called back the organization. I said, yeah, I'll take on the project. After answering the call, Mark went from feeling empty to having a lot on his plate. Responsible for gathering local bands for the concert, Mark found his purpose. But this is not a treasure I want to keep for myself, but I want to give that now it's kind of my mission to love on these kids. Give them hope, give them the same love. And my goal is to have that love keep going. This is Yasha Ronquillo from Maui High School for Hiki No. We're back at Evan Makai Middle School in Eva Beach on the island of Oahu in our new sixth grade wing. All of our sixth grade core classes are located on the top floor and most of our electives on the bottom floor. Students can work together in the same space to show their amazing talents and personalities through lots of art forms including photography in our yearbook class and digital art. Now from the Nu'uana district of Oahu, students from Hongwanji Mission School introduce us to a young cartographer who is charting the worlds of his imagination through maps. Cartography is the study of maps, but to me, cartography is creating your own world and creating a place for 
your imagination to go into. These days, maps are tools many now use on smartphones and computers. For Hongwenji Mission School, 6th grader Sidney Cogswell, maps are unique works of art that he draws by hand. He became interested in map making in the summer of 2019. Uh, I was watching this YouTuber who focused on D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, but I was really interested in the cartography part, so I decided to learn some techniques like drawing mountains, forests, so that's how I got into map making and that's what I like. Since then, Cindy creates one-of-a-kind maps with a unique characteristic. I draw um, fictional maps based off of real-world landmasses. I don't really plan my maps, I make themes. So I just focus on the terrain features. I do get inspiration from nature, like the jagged cliffs and, you know, the ridges. As he draws his maps, Sydney constantly looks for ways to make his maps better. After I finish a map, I tend to just look at my maps, see what I did wrong, see how I can fix it and how I can make it look better and change, maybe change my process. And then I hang them up and then I admire them. The thing is, I don't ever get bored drawing maps because there's so many possible outcomes. You use your creativity, you make a world one way, Another person uses their own creativity. Make it another way. I like it because you have many, many possibilities. Sydney has turned cartography into more than an interest. It's become a passion. My biggest goal in cartography is to be able to make people have, you know, fun with maps, I guess, and so that they can enjoy maps the way I like them. As Sydney pursues his newly found passion, He'll continue to use maps as a canvas to display and share his unique worlds. This is Brody Tran from Hongwanji Mission School for Hikino. We take you now to the Makiki District of Oahu, where students at Roosevelt High School show you a fashion-forward way to make use of all those old magazines you have laying around. The average household throws away 13,000 separate pieces of paper each year. Today, we'll show you how to recycle your unwanted magazines by using the paper to make a bracelet. Gather all the materials. A news magazine, glue stick, toothpicks, ruler, scissors, clear elastic cord, and a pen. Collect similar color magazine pages for your design. We're using blue for our bracelet. Measure the string into desired length. Make sure to leave extra length and cut. Measure the base 0.8 cm and connect it to the corner by drawing a diagonal line to form a long triangle. Keep alternating the side that you measure the base. Repeat this till you have approximately 23 to 30 strips. Cut along the lines. Use a toothpick and line the base of the triangle to it. Tightly roll it up and glue the tips. After the tips are sturdily glued on, remove the bead from the toothpick. Repeat till all cut strips are turned into beads. Slowly string the beads together onto the measured strand. To finish, tie the ends together. This is Tracy Din reporting for Hikino. We're back here at Evmokai Middle School as part of the Honolulu Uli Ahupua'a on the island of Oahu. If you didn't know, we Tigers love showcasing our talents and expressing ourselves through art. All over campus, you can find stunning artwork and murals created by our very own Tigers. The art was created during after-school hours and seasonal breaks by students and community sponsors. The murals aim to inspire integrity, growth, and to communicate ha, or no lalo hawaii, the breath, which lets us share our ideas and connect with everyone around us. Now from Hilo, students at Waiakea Elementary School introduce us to one of the thousands of Big Island residents who are struggling to make ends meet. According to the Atlas Report, which stands for Asset Limited, Income Constrained, Employed, over 60% of Hawaii Island's families are struggling financially. The last report that we have was put out in 2016. Um, for Hawaii Island, it showed that 61% of households on our island are in Alice or in poverty, 
What was even more alarming was comparing 2014 to 2016 and seeing that number increase from 14% within those 24 months. Brittany Malam lives that statistic. I'm a 37-year-old single mom. I work full-time. I'm also pursuing my bachelor's degree, actually a double major in UH Hilo for psychology being my primary and sociology my secondary major. I've got three kids and they are my everything. Childcare is a big obstacle for me, for sure. Um, I'm not originally from Hawaii yeah, and I don't have family here, so it's, it is a struggle. But there are so many resources in this community. An organization that is trying to coordinate those resources is Vibrant Hawaii. Vibrant Hawaii is an organization, it's really a, a community movement that brings together um, government, education, social services, and faith community, philanthropy, business, and individuals from around our island to really move towards our vision of a vibrant Hawaii. And what that vision comes down to is an equitable opportunity for everyone to build wealth. And our community's definition of wealth encompasses our human, our social, our natural, and our financial capital. It's a vision that gives Brittany Malam something to strive for. So my perfect day would be the day that I'm no longer worried about tomorrow, where I can sit comfortably in my own home with my family and feel secure financially um, and not have to worry, really. This is David Wong from YK Elementary School for Hikino. From the Hikino Archives, here comes another story about a community pulling together to help those in need. This time from the students at Maui Waina Intermediate School on the Valley Isle. So people leave like a dollar, two dollars, you know, like they get their change. Five years ago when we started Maui Fresh Streetery, we really wanted to be part of our community. And we didn't want to be just another fly-by-night food truck. And to do that, we started something called our Aloha Tip Jar. It's a little jar that sits out in front of our truck, and when people like our service or like our food, they can leave a, a, a tip in the jar. But instead of keeping that tips at the end of the month, we donate them to different nonprofits here on Maui, whether it be families in need, children fighting cancer, community clubs and organizations. Although the Aloha tip jar does support the community, it finally found a challenge that change couldn't conquer. When the government shut down the later part of last year, we thought, how can we help these people that weren't going to be getting their paychecks? And the problem was too big for our tip jar, meaning we couldn't collect, collect enough tips to give to all of the different workers. And so we thought, how can we help everybody that's affected? And so I had seen something called Pay It Forward, and how it works is we have a board and we put up the very first five meals. We offered five meals to any federal worker that was not getting a paycheck and they could come in and take a tag off the board and redeem it for a free meal. Three, week, three to four week period. You have four bowls, yeah. Um, when the shutdown PMC. was occurring, we had over 500 meals donated. I think we've fed almost 450, if not more, uh, federal workers and families in need. Chef Kyle and his food truck were guided by more than just the desire to help the community. He was driven by his kuleana. So to have someone think about us, especially during these kind of trying times, is really, really thoughtful and appreciative. Kuleana is an interesting word. Uh, we oftentimes refer to it as our responsibility. Um, being a small business owner here in Maui County, it's our responsibility to take care of our community, our ohanas, our families. Not only do these actions benefit the community, they build community. All of the things that we do to give back to our community, whether it be through our Aloha tip jar or our pay it forward board, are very rewarding for me because it gives me a sense of belonging to our community. This is Holden Suzuki from Maui Waina Intermediate School. For Hikino. Here's another story about people stepping up to help those in need. 
This time from students at Aliamanu Middle School on Oahu. Hygiene is a very important part of life. However, not everyone has access to the luxury of hygiene products. A survey done by Honolulu Star Advertiser in January of 2019 counted 4,311 homeless people on the island of Oahu. The majority of these people don't have the money to buy hygiene products. But at Aliomano Middle, two classes are working together to do their part to address this issue. The 7th grade leadership students, together with the 8th grade AVID students, organized the hygiene drives in hopes to help the homeless by allowing students to donate hygiene products such as deodorant and laundry detergent. If you go downtown, you could see tons of homeless people on the street, so hopefully you want to help them out by giving them luxuries that we take for granted every day that maybe they don't have. The idea was separately conceptualized by students from both classes. In order to make sure supplies got to those in need, the students ended up partnering with Family Promise, an organization with a mission to help homeless and low-income families achieve sustainable independence with the help of community. Yeah, so Family Promise of Hawaii is a nonprofit organization that deals with uh, multiple aspects of just helping families out in need. So one of the needs was uh, their month was collecting hygiene products. So that actually kind of fell into line of what we were trying to do, um, both the eighth grade AVID class and the seventh grade leadership class. The two classes partnership was born from a coincidence, as both classes just happened to come up with the same idea for a service project. Ms. Young actually contacted me and let me know that her leadership class was doing the same thing so that um, both groups of students should work together. So that's kind of where the partnership started. So they worked on the flyers together. They worked on the infomercials for it. There was still doubt about whether there would be any donations at all. Uh, when it started, a lot of uh, we had like a lot of doubt because we weren't sure if we could top the can stacking competition and we wanted to hopefully get donations. And then when we finished, we did get donations, which was really exciting because we didn't go in thinking that we were going to get anything. They found that most things that were donated were free products from hotels as opposed to things you might find around your home. The drive was still a great success for the leadership class and helped students to make a change in their communities while learning to be a leader. When we did our service project, um, it definitely had a change on my perspective of seeing things in different ways. It gave me some time to actually see things head on and give me some actual situations where I can use those leadership skills, so some actual life lessons. I think what was nice about it is that the kids really got to work on um, and figure out solutions to problems of things that are in our community. So in the end, it seems that everyone involved benefited from the experience in making a difference in their community. This is Kami Martinez from Alimanu Middle School for Hikino. We're back here at Eva Makai Middle School in the city of Eva Beach on the island of Oahu. Changing schools can be one of the toughest things to endure as a child. The Takai Transition Center was established at our school to help students feel welcome to our community and island. This center is named in honor of the late U.S. Representative Mark Takai. Welcoming students with an open heart, the center provides guidance and assists students in making their first year at our school their best. The center also trains students known as the Aloha Ambassadors who help welcome the new students and ensure everyone has a friend when they arrive at our school. Our final story continues this show's theme of helping those in need and comes to us from the students of Kamehameha Schools Maui Middle School in Pukalani. Richard Chasen, a former chef who once cooked at restaurants, now uses his culinary talents to feed dozens of homeless people at a shelter in Maui. I retired two years ago because the job I was working closed and they laid everybody off. Prior to his retirement, Mr. Chasen learned about how bad the homeless situation was as an employee at a homeless shelter. I worked at the homeless shelter because um, there was a job opening and it was casual at first, like two days a week, maybe 10 hours a week. And then eventually people quit and they go, oh, you want to work full time? I went, oh gosh, I've already got catering and Hope Chapel. I said, yeah, I think I can fit it in. Yeah. Smelling good, bro. It's smelling, it's smelling delicious. Yeah. But things got overwhelming. I worked there for five days until I got burnt out. Yeah, you know, it's just... Um, very, it's, it was very stressful at first, but then you get involved because you get different clients in there all the time. 
Though he once felt burnt out, Mr. Chasen found himself back at the shelter with the challenge of coordinating other volunteers through his church. My challenge would be getting people to come in to help me prepare the food and to serve the food. Oh, they don't know what's going on over there, so it was just good. It's a good experience for have these people to come over and see what actually goes on on Maui. So when you feed these people and serve these people, they're so thankful. And a lot of people know me, so when I go down there, they're like, wow, you're back. I said, <laughs> I'm back with the team, not just me. Put them in that box and I'll show you. Mr. Chasen came a long way to make Maui his home. I'm from Maine originally. I moved to Maui back in 1980. My brother um, moved here in 78 with his family. And he called me and said, why don't you uh, probably come to Maui? I said, well, yeah, I'll check it out. So I came over here and stayed. I would like people to remember me as um, somebody that does good for the community, helping people at the um, homeless shelter, or just helping anybody that needs food and setting up food and um, helping the churches. That's what I would like to do. With the compassion for the homeless and needy and the devotion to the people of Hawaii, Mr. Chasen plans to continue to serve his community. This is Ivalani Keavekane from Kamehameha Schools, Maui, for Hikino. Welcome back. Looks like we're at the end of this episode. Don't forget, all the stories you see here were created, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope the stories you've told were just as fun to watch as they were to make. Join us next week to see what Hawaii's future storytellers, Hiki, know. Can do! Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hikino.